Millions of Americans suffer from chronic back pain. We buy special pillows and special chairs, and we do exercises, we take pills, and sometimes we resort to surgery. But there are times when none of this works. Tonight, John Stossel tells us about a controversial but simple treatment that could end your years of suffering. It involves an adjustment, not to your spine, but to your mind. We hear it all the time. Oh, my aching back. I spent years trying to stretch mine. I've spent years on my back, doing phone interviews, talking to Barbara Walters, whatever, because I thought lying down might be less of a strain on my back. And millions of people have similar problems. Jeanette Barber's had back pain for years. Now the pain's moved to her ankles. For the last three years, she's had so much pain that she's had to use this electric cart to go to work. Of course, she's gone to lots of doctors and others. I've tried podiatrists, I've tried acupuncture, acupressure, orthotics, cortisone shots, anti-inflammatories. I went to a Chinese herbalist and boiled bark and drank it. Okay, I'm gonna warm it up for a few minutes. On this day, Jeanette was trying the latest in physical therapy, heat packs, electric currents, elastic bands to strengthen the muscles, but it hasn't helped. Hi, this is Keith Labus calling for... Legal Lawyer Legal Keith Labus says Legal. his back's so bad, he can't sit still. He uses a pillow, he changes chairs, works standing up, gives dictation on his knees. Now, he's on physical therapy, where his back and legs are massaged and then stretched. But neither this nor pain pills have helped. You've been to a neurologist, a joint disease expert, tried shiatsu, steroids, painkillers, stopped exercising, stopped working? I've tried everything. And your life has revolved around your back? Absolutely. That's all it's been about. John Collins' back pain comes and goes. Often it's so bad he has to miss work. Lately, he's been trying whirlpool baths. I can be on my hands and knees, not able to even stand up, unable to, to sit and ride the train to work for a week. Something's going on. Seven million Americans miss work from back pain every day. The government says back pain cost the U.S. economy $50 billion a year in lost time and medical costs. Of course, doctors have said they have the solution. Surgery was once regularly prescribed. Fusing the discs was in. Now they say that doesn't help. Then traction was in. Days on your back. Oops. Now they say that actually makes it worse. And you've had x-rays, MRIs. X-rays, MRIs. The doctors look at them and say what? Uh, uh, the last one looked at them uh, quickly and said that uh, he was, this is an exact quote, pessimistic about any recovery. And when I said, what should I try? He said, looks like you've tried everything. Jeanette complained to her boss about her pain. And that was fortunate because her boss happens to be Rosie O'Donnell. Please welcome our comedy producer in her little wheelie cart, Jeanette Barber. One day, O'Donnell put her on the show. Anyone out there who knows how to fix tendonitis so that Jeanette Barber can walk and get out of the wheelie cart, please call our show. Fix Jeanette, write us a little letter. A few you weeks know, later, O'Donnell announced that the show had received hundreds of letters. Now, a surprising amount of people said that they recommended this man, John E. Sarno, yes. MD. And, and he has the book Healing Back Pain is his book. Yes, and I have an appointment with him uh, in uh, two weeks. Dr. John Sarno is a professor of rehabilitative medicine at New York University Hospital. He's become a kind of back pain cult figure. Howard Stern talks about him as his savior. Don Imus, too. Actress Anne Bancroft says she went to lots of doctors, but only Sarno helped. How? Well, he doesn't operate on people. He doesn't give people drugs or exercises. He just talks to them. Well, first, he examines them to make sure they don't have an obvious injury or disease. And how does that feel when I press them? Um, ow, ow. Okay. And then he has them sit in a room and listen to him lecture for three hours. Good evening, folks. Glad to see you all here on time. We here he tells people that the pain is in your head. Well, not entirely. The pain's real, he says, but the cause is in your own mind. But you have to do two things to get over this syndrome. You have to say, I know there's nothing wrong with my back or my neck or my shoulders. Or 
Wait a second, how can that be? Almost all these people have x-rays where doctors have found some abnormality. Doctors told Keith his x-rays show seven herniated discs. An orthopedist saw a bone crack in my back. On my x-ray, I had real stuff, some disc problems, a crack. Yes, and they are normal. But they were abnormal. Crack isn't normal. Yes, a normal abnormality. Sounds odd, but in fact, scientists have recently discovered that there's almost no correlation between pain and what shows up on x-rays and MRIs. Many people without back pain have disc bulges, and lots of people with pain have no structural problems. Even when they do, says Sarno. These abnormalities couldn't in a million years produce the kind of pain that people get with this syndrome. Why not? Because they're just puny little changes, and there's no way that they could affect the nerves to produce the kind of pain. People get these things at both sides of the back, and they're paralyzed. They can't move, and so on. I mean, it's ridiculous to blame that on a little bulging disc, and that's done all the time. Furthermore, he says, isn't it odd that it was only after ulcers stopped being a big issue that so many Americans started having so much back trouble? And isn't it odd that the incidence of back pain is growing at a rate 14 times faster than the population? Now, you have to say to yourself, has something terrible happened to the American back in the last 20 or 30 years? What kind of nonsense is this? Sarno tells people that they're causing their own pain. Unconsciously, of course. He says it's the brain's reaction to stress or anger or fear. Rather than face the anger, the brain redirects your attention by reducing the blood flow to certain parts of the body. That causes pain. And that pain in your back or neck or ankle or wherever distracts your mind from the rage or unacceptable feelings. Doctor, would you say the pain acts like a lid? Yes, that's right. This rage is sort of knocking at the door. It's trying to come out. Now, this is hard to believe. So I'm in such a rage about something that I'm making myself suffer. But don't you see, your brain actually thinks it's doing you a favor by doing this. By distracting me from what I really don't want to think about. Exactly. Frankly, I think this sounds highly unlikely. And I wouldn't even be telling you about this if 15 years ago, ABC correspondent Arnold Diaz hadn't talked me into going to Sarno. With one lecture, Sarno cured me of 20 years of back pain. It's so embarrassing. I can't believe I'm telling you about this, but apparently I didn't have a back problem. I have a personality problem. Well, what do you like, Jeanette? That's kind of important. I'm pretty much compulsive or an obsessive about things. If, mm -hmm. uh, if In Jeanette's case, like, Sarno suspects her perfectionism is what's making do, her sick. You, know, you really push, push, push. Yeah. And pushing I'm, yourself uh, like mad. Yeah. What about this? He tries to lead his patients to what they might be angry about. That tendency to push oneself to be good, push oneself to be perfect, actually makes us mad inside. Keith is someone who holds his feelings in. So I notice that you're in pain, but you're smiling. So maybe you are one of those guys who can't. Anybody who knows me says I'm always smiling. Even if I'm in pain, I'm smiling. Unconsciously, says Sarno, he's probably furious about that. Oh. You feel that. You yeah. feel that a lot. The right trapezius. He works very hard. He tries to do everything perfectly, and he tries to keep everybody happy. That is enraging to the unconscious mind. Not that you really have to understand that and change your personality to get better. Somehow, the knowledge has great therapeutic power. The knowledge that what they're suffering from is stress factors. After the lecture, our group said they felt hopeful for the first time in years. It's my last chance, but it's what's left. It's what nobody else has looked at. While we wait to see if they're helped, I should point out that most doctors remain skeptical of Sarno's claims. Orthopedic surgeon Dr. Thomas Errico, while admitting that medicine hasn't found a solution for back pain, doesn't think Sarno's theory is the answer either. This is not a mainstream uh, theory with regard to back pain. Though he says Sarno isn't hurting anyone. Once you have eliminated a more serious diagnosis, then quite frankly, if you choose the course of physical therapy or um, Dr. Sarno's theories, or even going to a cemetery and, th and swinging a cat around your head three times, n none of these are, are going to affect you adversely. And despite my good results from Sarno's technique, 
My own brother would never go to him. If anybody told me this was all in my head, my rage would not be repressed. My brother Tom is a Harvard Medical School professor. For years, we've spent time together on our backs like this. He still has the same kinds of periodic back and neck pains I used to have. He'll go months without pain. But the week we taped this, he was having such neck pain that an orthopedic surgeon had him spending 45 minutes a day hanging from this bizarre device. This is, I think, fairly mainstream for neck problems. Dr. Sarno says neck pain, back pain, knees, ankles, it's all the same syndrome. The pain keeps moving around to distract your brain. Dr. Stossel doesn't buy it. We're talking about something very complicated, and this theory is very simplistic. Now, simple things are wonderful, but I don't think this cuts it. What do you have to lose? Why not go to Sarno? Try it. There are a lot of ridiculous things I could do that probably don't work that I'm not doing. But this worked for me, your brother. Well, as a scientist, I have to say anything's possible, but I'm not convinced. My brother, the doctor, he won't go to you. If they can't demonstrate it in the laboratory, it doesn't exist. There is no lab test that could prove Sarno's theory, yet he claims a 90% success rate. So week after week, these people who've seen a dozen doctors to no avail, they come to you and they get better? Yes. That's what Most happens. of them? Virtually all of them. Remember, they're screened. Can we go through your records and check for ourselves? Oh, sure. 2020's Deborah Runsey went through his files, picking patients at random. It's not a scientific survey, but of 20 patients she reached, all said they were better or much better. And the so patients we followed, we'll, well, three uh, months we'll after Sarno's lecture, they're better too. Much better. I'm walking without pain, getting out of bed in the morning without pain, going about most of my activities without even having to think about any pain. It gave me my life back. John Collins says Sarno taught him how to make the pain go away. And now when the pain comes, you just tell yourself, I'm doing it to me? Well, I say that I know what's going on. Uh, down boy, damn you, and... Uh... Down boy, damn you? Uh-huh. Uh, you're talking to your brain? I'm talking to my brain to my back. And that makes it go away? Yeah. Just understanding it's not a physical process, but a mental one is all it takes. All three say that now, for the first time, they feel they have some control over their pain. And that now, when it comes, they just go about their business. Well, once in a while, I get a twinge, yeah. Just absolutely. ignore them, go yeah. about your business. It used Maybe. to be that I'd panic and say, where is this going? Is my back going to go out? And now I'm like, okay, this will be here for a little while, and, and it will go away, and it does. For Keith, it took about a month. John and Jeanette were pain-free one week after the lecture. I didn't think it would be as direct. One week, they made us go to work on a, on a Sunday. My ankles hurt for three days. And I, I thought that was really more of a direct correlation than I expected. So now whenever my ankles hurt, I just go, well, I must be testy. Jeanette made a triumphant return to the Rosie show. And now she's upset at how much time and money she's wasted on chiropractors and doctors. doctors I'm estimating that I spent about $20,000, but I have had insurance the entire time, which means that it would really be more like $100,000 for a medical treatment for a condition that was basically all in my head. But it feels like a miracle, because I had hoped that someday I would walk again. I really had given up that I would ever run. Three months later, I can run. It's a miracle, I think. Oh, well, John Stossel tells us that he does have relapses, but when he starts to feel twinges of pain, he just starts screaming in his brain to knock it off. I have trouble seeing John screaming in his brain, but he's, he says it works. But, you know, for most people suffering with back pain, stretching and exercises every day uh, really does a trick. I used to have uh, uh, back spasms, and uh, the exercises helped me. This is especially true if your pain is not emotional. Um, the idea of screaming, I'd rather do the exercises than hurt my voice. <laughs> Anyhow, we'll be right back.